All right, welcome back guys to Press and Go. I've got another cool car for you. Actually kind of a interesting story. My buddy just bought a new Ford F-150 Lightning and it had to go back in for something at the shop. So they gave him this Mach-E and he said I could borrow it to make this video. So we're bringing you this new Mach-E from Ford. There might not be a more iconic vehicle in American history than the muscle cars that came from the 60s. The Mustang being one of those. There was a lot of controversy when Ford decided to name its first electric vehicle after the Mustang name with the Mustang Mach-E. And, you know, I, I do think the Mustang is an iconic vehicle. It's got its own thing and it's always been associated with a big V8 motor, something that rowl, you know, howls as it goes down the road. This is quiet. This is the, one of the quietest vehicles I've ridden in in a long time. It's so quiet, it does not have that roar of the V8 motor, but it definitely has the speed. This thing gets up and goes, and this one today, this is the select model, being the entry level model of the Ford Mustang Mach-E, and we still rip down the road. It goes zero to 60 in 6.3 seconds. If you get uh, the highest performance, the GT performance upgrade, it goes zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. That is fast. And that's as fast as you'll ever get in a, in a V8 Mustang with the naturally aspirated motor. But say what you will, I, I think it's a great vehicle. Whether it should wear the Mustang name badge, I'll leave that up to you. Um, I, think, I think Mustang has always been iconic and I, I love this vehicle, but maybe I think Ford should have named it with its own moniker so they could make its own history rather than trying to ride on something that's already got a long history. This one comes in a beautiful blue. Um, it's a light blue. It comes in, they have a dark blue version as well, but this one really pops. I think it's probably a polarizing color. You may or may not like it, but I think that you get to choose your own color. That's the beauty of buying vehicles. But as we look at this, we'll get a quick look at this vehicle. We'll walk around it. We'll look in the inside. We're gonna take it for a drive. We're gonna show you what it feels like with that zero to 60, with that instant torque. And then I'll give you my opinion on it, whether I think I would buy one and whether maybe you should consider a Ford Mustang Mach-E. If you're looking in the EV world, there are not a lot of options that are similar to this. You got Tesla, you've got the Ford, you've got um, Hyundai and Kia have their, their vehicles. So there's not a lot of options. So I think if you're in the market for an EV vehicle, you're probably looking at the Mach-E as one of those options. So let's take a look at it and get into it. Let's do a quick walk around. From the front side, I actually do think this looks a lot like a traditional Mustang. You've got really aggressive front. I think the grill on this, even though there really isn't a grill, you do have some shutters that can open and close based on your speed. But I do think that it has an aggressive front end. It's the rear end that I think takes away from what you perceive a traditional Mustang with that coupe look, this is more of a hatchback. Well, it is a hatchback, it's not more of, it is a hatchback. And I think that kinda is where it loses that Mustang feel for me. But I like the look of the front end. You've got good aggressive lines. These headlights are really nice looking. You've got the nice orange daytime running lights that come on um, when you lock and unlock. And then with your hazard lights, You've got your charging port over here, which is just touch activated. You can come in here, there's your AC charge, and then now you pop that down, you get your DC charging port. One of the cool things with Ford is they just, as many of you know and have seen in other videos, 
they just got access to the Tesla charging network, which will expand their ability for the owners to go beyond their home range, which is really cool. I think for the EV world, no matter where you stand in the EV world, uh, whether you like it or don't like the EV movement, if you are an EV owner, I think it's great that we have expansion of that network to allow for um, more capability within the, the EV world. Coming around the front, again, good clean lines along the side. You've got that kind of a swooping line that goes through it without being an actual crease line on these doors. You can kind of see right here, you've got a line and going across the, the middle of the door. This being the, the standard trim, uh, the select trim that is, you just have these 18 inch wheels, um, comes uh, with a 225-60 R18 tire. It's not an, it's probably not as wide of a tire as you would pick for your performance Mustang. They do that obviously for EV efficiency, but it does take away from some of this car's performance capability to have a little narrower tire. Coming down the side, you notice there are no actual handles. So you've got this little wing tip thing, which is kind of cool if you come to the side. It's like a little grab handle and you got this button. So push the button, it pushes the door out. You can close it on the back. It's a similar sort of thing, but you don't have the little grab handle. It just pops the door out, open and close it. Now Ford did something to try to make this look a little more like your typical standard Mustang. You see this black line, let's see if I can get, see the black line going down the roof? They tried to lower the height of the roof line by giving you that black painted area to bring this hatch down in a visual effect. I do think it helps. Um, it does definitely bring your eyes down where the painted area of this vehicle is so that it looks less hatchy than it is, but it is still a hatchback. It's coming around the back. You've got those traditional three Mustang lights. We saw that with the animations, um, when you lock and unlock this vehicle, you get the animated lights. When you put the blinkers on, you get animated lights as well with the direction that you're moving which is pretty cool. Parking sensors on this base model. I do like the Mustang logo. I think it looks cool. It's kind of got a grooved look, blackout appearance. And they did put a, a windshield wiper on that rear window for you. But overall, I think the outside of this vehicle, I do think it's clean. I think, again, looks and appearance are subject to the beholder. There are people that find this very attractive. There are people that will say that it is an abomination of the Mustang name and it's ugly. For me, I'm somewhere in the middle. I really like the front end, as I've said. The back end is not my favorite, but if this was the car I had to choose to drive, I don't think I would be angry about it. I would enjoy driving this vehicle. And as we get inside, I will note, this is a comfortable vehicle. Ford is doing seats right. I'm a bigger guy and a lot of these manufacturers are making these hard, uncomfortable seats. But Ford seats are like plush. They just kind of melt, you melt into them and I like it. So comfortable car to ride in, I'm down with that. So let's actually go take a look inside. All right, let's jump inside this driver's seat and see what we've got. So good clean panel. You've got your windows. You've got auto windows on all four. This one does not have memory seats, um, but it's a good clean door panel. You've got your frunk release on the seats. You've got power, power seats, and then you do have a power lumbar, which is nice functions. You get quite a bit of animations. It's not really excited about me getting in. It wants to keep making noise. So let's get in here. Behind the steering wheel, you've got your cruise control. You've got your music. You've got a nice little 
display in front of you, which actually is really crisp and clean. And then you've got this massive 15.5 inch touchscreen display, which we'll get into here in a minute. Power charging, you've got a, a USB-C and USB-A port, two cup holders. You've got your shifter knob, parking, parking electronic parking brake, and then under this armrest, you've got a decent sized storage compartment under there that can be closed. So you can actually close that up to kind of clean up the area. Even on this base model, you look at these seats. Look at those things. Nice stitching on a base model seat with this leather. I don't even know if it's synthetic or not, but man, they're comfy. You got actual vents here, your knobs for your wipers, and then an actual blinker knob, which uh, Tesla's gone away from. Rear view mirror up top here. You've got a couple lights, no. Uh, the home link actually is over here on your visor. This does not have a sunroof, which fine with me. Has a sunglass holder here. This is a good, nice, nice seat. If you're looking, you got the B pillar right there. Yeah, it's, it's in the way, but it's not too bad. And then the uh, B pillar over your shoulder, depending on where the seat is set, could impede on your, your visibility. Got a glove box. Yeah, it's actually smaller than I thought. There's a lot of void space there, but um, you could fit quite a bit in there. Anyways, nice clean. We'll, we'll show you this uh, center display here in just a moment. All right, so we got this nice display up here. All right, so we're started. So you see you've got good information. I actually think it's pretty clean. You've got your range over here. So we're 81% state of charge right now on this standard range battery. And we still have 178 miles to go. And you've got your speedometer. I have a feeling we could probably adjust the view of that in a few different ways but then you come over here and here's where you got your real 15.5 inch massive touchscreen display it's got this volume knob in the in the screen which is really unique and then here we're displaying apple carplay if we hit the home button we can get out of apple carplay show you some of the different um, native functions Oh, we can't turn the radio on. No, no. Let's go to charging. So if we pull up our charging screen, you can see, um, again, same information we've already talked about, but we can see charging locations. Oh, well, maybe not. Let's see if we can get a navigation to a, to a place. We may just... Here we go. Let's see, so it's, I love the screen. It's huge. It's very responsive. So if we were to, you can see there's a charging that looks like a home. But if we zoom out in Colorado Springs, we do not have an ex expansive charging network, whereas Denver, the metro area, does. But down here somewhere there should be nope that's too far it should be in security there should be a electrify america at a sam's club that it's not showing up should be right here but it's not showing up on here so i assume if we were to navigate to a location outside of the city it would show us our chargers that we would need um, but not on there natively so that's okay Let's see. Your HVAC controls. You can change that on the screen. There are not any physical buttons to change your HVAC. That's all gonna be in the screen. 
um, as far as that and you can adjust with this knob the different uh, speeds different volumes for your radio defrost and then this one does not have seat heaters I believe oh wait it does have seat heaters right there so I'd have to play with this a little more to get used to it but you can see it's all here in the screen the 360 camera so you can get around view of the car you can look at the front different views of the front and then here's our 360 camera right here so you can zoom in on that on the different areas that is all right all right hopping in the back not a lot on the door you've got a little bit of a compartment here I don't think you'd fit much of a water bottle or anything in there these are your latches for your doors kind of a cool trigger that's on all doors rear window back seat again look at that stitching that looks really a lot more premium than this base model would seem to be but it's got a really nice stitching on it. Not a lot of leg room, but this is a sedan. So the seat still offers a lot of space. Let's get a look at the headroom. So there's a little cutout in the ceiling here. You can see that. So I actually, 5'8", got a lot of good headroom. Um, no problems there headrest hits me just right I can actually raise it up even more and uh, it's a comfy back seat so if we close the door yeah good good back seat got this rear armrest that's nice you could fit you could fit three across if you needed to two adults for sure would uh, fit comfortably back here and then a child in the middle with the seat but I don't know if, how you'd fit three car seats across the back here to be honest but comfy back seat I could go on a trip for this in this back seat no problem all right let's hop into the back all right so there's a button right under here releases the hatch this one on the select trim does not come with a power hatch your higher end trims you can get that as an option doesn't bug me I don't have a problem with lifting and lowering my own hatch there's a decent sized rear compartment I I think I could fit my golf clubs back here I should bring them along I always wonder about my golf clubs because obviously that is a priority in my life but I don't know I think they would fit certainly if you lowered the seats down um, but you do have a little bit of under the floor storage not a lot most of it's taken up that's your charger your level uh, one charger it's actually not a lot of space under there. Some of the uh, competition, you know, Tesla has a lot of space and uh, some of the other competitors do have better extra storage back here. But um, you know what, in our regular vehicles, we don't have extra storage like that as an option. So 12 volt outlet right there. We do have some lights for nighttime back here. And then these seats, fold down manually um, with a button up here no manual down or no uh, automatic down and up on those 60 40 split yeah it's for what it is I think you'd be just fine uh, fitting several pieces of luggage back here and going on a road trip so then we got a little grab handle up here where you can do your manual poor man's closing nowadays and it latches just fine. All right, coming in the back passenger, whole lot of the same as we got over on the other side. Let's focus in real quick. You do have a couple vents in the middle here, a USB-C, USB-A charging port. So you do have some air here. There's no air on the pillar for the rear seat, so that's gonna be your only air and then anything under the seat as well. You got these map page pocket things in the back of the seats. But again, good back seat, got child at, uh, latch anchors on the two outboard seats. So you could fit two full-size car seats in the back, just nice. All right, coming in the front passenger seat. 
door panels pretty similar to your rear you got a little more storage here than in the rear seat but kind of a unique i really kind of think that's interesting how they did that with the speaker kind of a surround cutout where the speaker is but coming in on this select model you do not have power seats for the passenger so you got to do the uh, old school manual sliding forward and back and then you got a power or a manual rear here in the middle you do have a little bit of storage underneath the center console here i don't know you'd fit a lot there maybe a few purses would fit there or change or gum it's not huge but you know what i'll take it something extra and then you've got these all these vents going across and that big old 15 inch screen right there in the middle it's a good clean clean look it's not not super cluttered or overwhelming it's just a nice clean cozy look and feel on the inside of this vehicle all right let's uh pop in and see what that frunk has for us gotta love the frunk that is a big deal in the ev world the frunk the front trunk and apparently a lot of people make a big deal of this and i bet most of them would never put stuff in here anyways but mustang mach-e pretty decent storage up here you know i can get down below my elbow in there and you can actually store ice in there and it'll drain out the bottom according to their website i've never tried it but it's good clean all these electric vehicles there's nothing since it doesn't have an internal combustion motor under here it just has an electric motor and some wiring they're usually pretty clean um, you have your washer fluid over here a few access points along it otherwise it's just a clean clean front trunk area with a decent amount of store i bet you could fit a, a decent i bet you put a carry-on luggage in there no problem and then to close it just bring it down push down on it and it is latched all right guys so here we are we're going to take this thing for a test drive get all our cameras going here we are we're inside the Mach-E get a test drive I already got the car running which the craziest part about these electric vehicles this is Richard by the way my friend Richard he's the one letting us borrow this today he is also the lucky owner of a f-150 lightning so we'll be doing that video here in a little bit when he gets it back from Ford but the crazy part about this is how quiet it is it's insane you know it's just there's no motor noise this has fake motor noise if you really give it the beans but there's just no motor noise in it it I keep thinking that it's not on so but I I do like how quiet it is. so we'll turn this thing into reverse you get the nice backup camera now this one as many electric vehicles do has one pedal driving so we'll see how that works does it have different degrees you know richard different degrees of one of, pedal. yeah can you adjust that yeah you can is that all in here or is it that is, a yeah, on the move the, it's all in the the console um so you can set it according to your uh your driving style okay well we're gonna go with whatever it's set at right now which i think based on what it is it brought us to a complete stop so it's probably pretty uh at its highest level one of the cool things about this too is the you have different driving modes on it where you can do like a a whisper mode where it conserves some of the electric power okay and you can do a, a um uh, there's a different mode on there too i forget the second mode and then there's an unbridle and the unbridle is what it's on right now that's where, where you, you get everything that's where you get everything where you get on it and you hear that Rrr. which honestly is still quite a bit even in this base model i mean we don't have all the the power that the gt does but even in this base model it still gets up and goes i mean most your internal combustion motors don't have the power that this base model does so that's what's crazy is you, we sit here and talk about oh i need the the highest performance right well, the reality is I think the base model probably give you a pretty good experience relative to what you're used to in your regular vehicle. 
Oh my goodness. There we go. There we go. Gets up and goes really nicely. It throws you in that seat and you know, I, I've driven, the. we drove the Tesla Model uh, Y and I drove it. I didn't ride in it, I drove, I rode a little bit. Um, when you're not expecting the thrust as a passenger, it kind of makes you sick, <laughs> sick to your stomach, you know? Almost like riding, riding a roller coaster. It really is, it's kind of a crazy feeling. So driving around, just my first impressions is this is still pretty quiet. I don't hear a lot of the road noise coming through. Um, I do like that it still has some of the features like the actual turn signal stock and the wiper stock, things that Tesla has decided they don't want on their vehicles anymore. Um, I haven't tried a Tesla without any of them so, to be able to compare it, but to me, I like the feel. I think most consumers probably feel the comfort of this feels a lot like your everyday vehicle that you would buy from this one from Ford. It doesn't feel all that different to drive it day to day. And I think that's what a lot of people that are thinking about making the change to an electric vehicle want. They're looking for that that feel, that comfort of normal, right? Um, I really like the screen here, you know, again, comparing it to the Tesla, because that's what I've driven, and then I have driven a, a Hyundai Onyx 5. Both this and the Hyundai have a screen in front of you. I didn't find it overwhelmingly um, frustrating to not have a screen where my speedometer was on this in the Tesla, but it is, when it's when it's here, it's nice. You're just looking right at it, you can see it. You're, either way, you're taking your eyes off the road to look at the speedometer, so. But I like that little screen. It's got good clarity, good information. I can see my range. I can see my speedometer. And I like that, so. It rides real smooth. It does. It's got a nice ride. It's not really, uh, you know, we uh, here in Colorado Springs, we've got our fair share of of uh, potholes, and having just come off of a fairly severe winter storm, those potholes have expanded, and so hitting a few of those little ones, I try to avoid them generally, but even hitting a few of those little bumps, it absorbs it really well. And you told me that in your time driving this, you felt like it had somewhat of a sporty when you start to get into corners that you it kind of grabs the corner a little bit rather than giving you that wobbly whooshy feel is yeah. that how you describe it we got yeah. the sun blaring in our eyes <laughs> i actually when i was when i was driving it the first day i had it i took a corner probably a little faster than i should have but uh it's, it tends to kind of hug the corner a little bit oh yeah there you go yes it, we're getting in it again yeah we're getting up we've got to beat traffic <laughs> But yeah, it's got great acceleration, and this one is an all-wheel drive version. There's one lower, which is the rear-wheel drive standard range, and then if you go up, you get the all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive extended range battery, which goes from the 72 kilowatt battery this has to a 91 kilowatt, or 90 or 91, I believe, kilowatt battery. So you get that extended range. It gives you about another 50 to 60 miles. We all know that just like your miles per gallon, that's relative to how heavy of a foot you have and how kind you drive it. So um, so I think probably most people are gonna buy and, and look for that extended range battery just on the comfort, right? That's part of the anxiety yeah. of going to the electric world. And the Lightning's your first electric vehicle, right? It so you're my first electric vehicle. brand new to this yeah. electric vehicle community, right? Yes, and I was very skeptical at first. What were the things that held you up when you were thinking about an electric vehicle? So, some of the biggest things, honestly, were, were the, uh, I was concerned about the power. I was concerned that I wouldn't have the same type of power as a, as a combustion engine. Blew was, that, blew, that, that, blew that concern out of the water, right? That's gone. First time I test drove it. Yeah. I think I, think I smoked a motorcycle, I think I told you that. But <laughs> yeah. It's kind of interesting. Dude, dude in a, in a truck. In a truck. Dude yeah. pulls up to me at the, at the next light and he looked at me and said, respect. So it was kind of cool. Yeah. And, uh, had a lot of power, so I blew that out of the water. Some of the other things were like the comfort level. I was a little concerned about going with a more of a base model, having the comfort that I would expect from a... Um, from a regular vehicle that I, that blew me out of the water again. Fords are really comfortable. They have these seats in all, every Ford vehicle I've sat in. I feel like 
they do see and I've, I've got a 2012 f-250 myself and it just has the base cloth seats and i find it very comfortable so ford's always done really good comfort with their seats yep. um so what other hang-ups what were <laughs> what, any other major things that were really holding you back from taking the leap so the one, one and this may sound kind of petty but one of the other things that i was looking at when i was trying to make a choice is i the the exterior um image of what i was going for okay uh when you typically see it see a truck you see that grill you see that that emblem you mm -hmm. see all the things on the outside that kind of kind of that rough and gruff yeah, um, kind of i'm i'm here yep yeah and uh with the ford lightning i know we're not doing the ford lightning we'll do that later you'll notice with the ford lightning the the absence of an actual grill um which so, is pretty typical on all electric vehicles yes some of them have a, a vent but the grill is pretty much well, it's not needed, the same as an internal combustion motor, so, but it, they gave it that big look, right? Yeah, so that was one of the things, but I, was, I really am blown away by how well they've done with the, with the EV. Uh, everything, everything about the EVs that I've noticed so far has kind of quieted my concerns and my, mm -hmm. my worries about going electric. One of the other things, honestly, too, was how do I charge the thing? Yeah. Like, where do I plug it into? What kind of power draw is it going to have? Uh, can I plug it into a normal outlet at home? Do I have to have other other things that I plug it into? So those were all things that I was thinking about when I was considering going electric. Um, Which you've got, you did upgrade to an actual 220 level two charger, right? I did, yeah. So that helps. So yeah. you can come and charge every night. I would. It's like having a fuel pump in your garage, yeah. right? Honestly, you'd be able to fill up every night to whatever level you want for the next day. That's kind of. I wish I had that. <laughs> it, it, it is nice too to have that have that at the house. Um, I did try the first the first night that I had the the EV. I did try charging it on a on a regular charge because you can't you can't do that to plug it into a wall outlet. Just a one ten. Just a one ten. Yeah. Um, but much uh, slower. Much slower. Much slower. I plugged it into the one ten outlet <coughs> the first night I had it. And it said it'll be it'll be done three days from now. Yeah. It up to 100%. Whereas I believe your level two on this is zero to 100 in 11 hours, is yeah. what Ford states. Yeah. Is that right? So, yeah. and obviously that that is dependent on your electrical panel, the what, how many amps you've put in with your charger, and all those things. That, again, there's not an exact hey, this is what you can get. That's just generally what it's capable of. Um, and then if you DC fast charge this thing, it's uh, zero to, a, I believe, zero, 10 to 80 in, on the, on the standard range battery, 10 to 80 is somewhere around 34 minutes. If you got the extended range on this Mach-E, it's more like 45 minutes. And again, that's all dependent on the charger you pick. We've got 150 chargers, cut 350 chargers. This is only capable of accepting, um, I believe, best I could tell, the standard range battery only accepts 170 kilowatt charging as its max speed. And that the, if you went to the extended range battery, it would bump it up to about 150. So even if you parked yourself at a 350 kilowatt charger, the max you're gonna get is the 107 or the 150 on a Mach-E, which, if you watch a lot of reviews, is one of the dinks to the Mach-E relative to some of your other vehicles. But even if you have a higher max uh, charging rate, it doesn't mean it's going to hold it that long. It's all relative to the battery temperature, relative to the, it's got a different charging curve. So it's all relative. This will probably take you longer on a road trip to get to your destination than say a Model Y or one of the Hyundai, which have an 800 volt architecture um, charging, which can accept that 350 kilowatts for at least a portion of their charging. But for your use case, you, we've talked about this. You know, I, we've we've talked, and we'll talk more about it with your Lightning. I wish I could entertain a Lightning, but I have a trailer that I tow with, and so far, from what I've been able to tell, and we're going to tow it at some point in the future with your lightning. We are, I'm excited for that. You know, and see what it does for ourselves. But yep. from what I've seen from other reviewers, the towing capability of the electric trucks is not nearly where probably people who are towing on a regular basis want it to be. And that is my case. So um, for me, I'll probably keep an internal combustion motor for 
pulling my vehicles uh, or my trailers. But for your use case around town, this is these are great vehicles. And frankly, I wish I had an electric vehicle to complement my truck because at nine to 10 miles per gallon, that's pretty abysmal mileage on a vehicle. This would be a much better use case, much more affordable, way more environmentally uh, friendly if you're into that. But um, this is a comfortable car. We've been driving now for a little while and it's just a comfortable car to be in. I, I could be in here for a nice little road trip. So I'm actually, we're gonna go on a trip this weekend. We'll, Richard graciously allowed me to take this car with us. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking, but I could do a road trip in this, I think. And depending on obviously the charging network and how that experience went um, would depend on how the road trip goes. But this is a nice, comfortable car to sit in, to ride in, it's quiet and it's, it's not flashy. Never, everything's not right in your face. This is a huge screen, but honestly, it's, it's not intrusive. Do you find it intrusive? Not at all. And that was one of the other things too that I was looking at because uh, some of the some of the other models have the screen where they're flipped the orientation. Right. And uh, I was wondering with the screen, with the orientation, the way this one is, is that going to be right in my face? Is it going to be flashy? Is it going to be distracting yeah. while I'm driving? And I haven't found it distracting at all. Yeah, I haven't found it to be. And I'm sure when this changes to a, a nighttime mode, it would be even less intrusive. But um, no, this is a great vehicle. And uh, I've enjoyed my time with it. So we started, do you remember, were we at 181, 83? 181, yeah. yeah, 181. So I should have taken note of how many miles we just drove, um, but we're down to 169 miles left on this uh, range, which for around town, you're not gonna drive 200 miles on a daily basis for most people. Um, so the battery, the standard range battery for if this is your commuter around town, probably be just fine, you know? I think it may have been a little closer to like 173, honestly. Yeah, so maybe yeah, we haven't so. used that much of the battery. Yeah. I do think the hard part with an electric vehicle for me is if you are someone who's going to be traveling long distances on a regular basis, um, if you do road trips with your family, I do think that probably the concern about range still resides, right? It's still there. Absolutely. Um, for me, where we do travel with my family, this would, you'd have to have the funds to make this an extra car or say my spouse has an electric vehicle. I have a, an internal combustion motor vehicle that we can take on longer road trips. I don't know. Maybe maybe actually doing a road trip would ease my anxiety as a consumer. Um, and we'll see. I actually have a video coming up in a month or so. I'm going to take a trip to Arizona um, with my dad, who is not an EV fan. Yet. Yet. <laughs> not that he doesn't like them. I think the anxiety, the range anxiety is definitely present in his world. Um, he's more comfortable with a an internal combustion vehicle. But we're gonna see, we're gonna see what it's like to road trip with an electric vehicle. And we'll bring that to you on this channel and and we'll see how it goes. I think you mentioned it before too, Preston, somewhere in the, in the intro or something about Ford partnering now with Tesla too, to be able to get the Tesla chargers. That's a good point. So it kind of opens up your charging network too. You're not just stuck to, to one charging network to be able to have the charging stations on a, on a road trip. Yeah. Again, I, I'm, I'm sure the, the anxiety would still be there. I still have a little bit of that anxiety. I haven't taken a road trip yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I definitely would like to see what that's like and, and how that goes. And... Well, and even if you don't have range anxiety, I think some of the the anxiety about the fact that you do have to sit at a charger for, you know, 30, 40 minutes potentially to get your full charge. That doesn't mean that you need to, if you figure out what your vehicle's charging curve is to where you know, hey, it's gonna charge, it's gonna rip up to 40 or 50%, maybe you unplug there and hit, hit the road back to the next charging stop and then you rip it again at its fastest speeds rather than waiting through those slower speeds at the upper end of your battery. But Tesla's net network certainly eases some of that anxiety. You're not subject just to the public charging network of Electrify America and whatnot. 
So I think that's a big thing. Now, if you're a Tesla owner, I'm not sure that that is a, a thing you're looking <laughs> forward to. We've all seen the videos of people charging and the charging ports are on the wrong side of the vehicles compared to the Tesla network. So we definitely gonna have some need to maintain order at the charging stations and as this all kind of irons out some of the details but i think that's a, a huge positive well the other things i think we can talk about when we're doing the, the lightning video more in depth too is the the app that ford has put together for these things is really really a, a nice app if you plan your trip on the ford app the, the app will actually tell you how far you need to go before oh, nice. you get to the charging station. So it kind of does that route planning it does. really yep. nicely. Okay. Yep. That's good. I think that's huge because being able to just have the computer help you make that decision instead of you having to go, okay, I've got 168 miles. How much of that am I comfortable with draining down before I actually plan? Nowhere. Yeah, before <laughs> I plan to stop at a charger, having an, a good quality app and so it's good to hear that Ford's is intuitive and gives you the information that you're wanting or needing relative to route planning so there are some some fallbacks to Ford's app and I think we can cover some of those when we do the lightning uh, review to hit a few of the top ones real quick so the, the the big one for me is is limited on the information it gives you on the home screen okay so you have to flip through several screens to get the information you're looking for regardless of the size of your phone. I've, I've actually looked at the app on, a, on the iPad as well. Okay. With the bigger screen, and you still have to flip through screens to get the information you're looking for. So it needs a little bit, <coughs> put the better information right at hand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's probably the biggest one for me. The, the other one um, that I wish it would do a little bit better is have some of the vehicle settings, like, uh, <coughs> sorry, oh. like some of the settings that you have to like set the, the comfort of the cabin different things of that nature aren't available on the app. You have to actually do it from here. Okay. Uh, stuff like that. All right. <coughs> well, that's good information. So let's wrap up this video. I want to thank you guys for coming out and, and joining us on this uh, tour and drive of the Mach-E um, Mustang. It's an iconic name. It's an iconic vehicle that, again, we've talked about whether or not it should have taken the name of the Mustang and put it on this platform. That's for your each individual to decide. Personally, I wish they would have come up with something that could have been its own icon um, and made its own name over time, but I understand why they did it. Um, use that name and it is a it is a peppy vehicle. This is fast. It's not a slow vehicle. And so it definitely has that get up and go like a Mustang would and what you would expect out of Mustang. But um, again, I don't know if it should have been the same name as the icon. I hopefully that will stick around in its own realm with the V8 motors and we already see the push to get rid of those big block motors but um, this vehicle if you're looking for a, an electric vehicle in your market please check out the Mustang um, check it against all the other brands the Kias Hyundai's the Tesla's of course so that you can figure out what suits your electric needs better than than others dive into what your use case if you're going to be road tripping a lot maybe this isn't your car but maybe it is um, that's i think it, it it really just depends on what what really is important to you in an electric vehicle so this is preston with my friend richard we want to thank him for letting us borrow this vehicle that he's got on loan to him from ford and we'll check you on the next video All right. So you can see I have no idea what I'm saying ever. <laughs>